management. I hope you all enjoyed it because it's a new development in the CAPI scope and it's quite useful in some scenarios. Yeah, so you, you can download slides by this link. There is a short link, so you can take a photo. Okay. So, yeah, in this talk, we'll focus on how we automated cluster API provider management using GitOps on a very large scale uh, with cluster API operator. Uh, but before we begin, let's quickly recall what cluster API is. Cluster API or... Okay, sorry, some technical difficulties. So, go ahead, Michael. Okay, uh, yeah, so I stopped uh, at cluster, what cluster API is and Cluster API provides a declarative interface that enables cluster conf uh, creation, configuration, and management in a structured way. And Cluster API has modular architecture where each module is presented by a provider. And there are six provider types for different uh, use cases. Uh, the main one is called core, and it defines top-level abstractions like uh, machine, cluster, machine deployment, and so on. Then we have bootstrap and control plane provider types. The first one is, is used to add a new nodes to the cluster, basically configuring kubelet. And the second one is for configuring control plane components like kubeap server, kube controller manager, and so on. Uh, recently, two new types were added to cluster API. One is add-on provider type for managing essential add-ons like CSI drivers, CNI plugins, uh, and also IPAM for IP address management. And finally, uh, there is infrastructure provider type. And infrastructure providers include implementation, uh, API implementation specific for, for example, AWS, Azure, GCP, OpenStack, even bare metal, and more. So they offer a way to interact with respective infrastructure for cluster management. And in general, each provider has a unique set of options that have to be set up. And finally, I need to mention that all providers are essentially Kubernetes controllers, so they implement uh, the control uh, loop pattern, which translates uh, Kubernetes specifications into operations against the underlying infrastructure. Uh, so generally speaking about those providers, it's uh, something which you probably, if you used Capi, you know already. There is a tool called ClusterCTL for modifying and applying those manifests internally. Uh, you don't see them, you cannot manage them, you can only apply them through this tool, so it's not entirely that helpful. And copy operator on the other side allows you to do so. So all those manifests become under your own management and you can manage them with GitOps. Uh, it's all declarative and it's all ready to be used. So Swift, are you gonna go to the next slide, Michael? Okay. Yeah, so, and as Daniel said, despite the fact Cluster API provides, um, it, it defines a declarative interface for cluster management. Its providers are managed manually with the uh, CLI tool. Daniel mentioned it's called Cluster CTL. And this is not very convenient uh, if you have multiple instrumented clusters, especially if you customize them a lot. Uh, and moreover, since all these operations are manual and not tracked by any GitOps tool, users may see some negative effects of that. Like there is no way to control over what's going to be deployed on the cluster, uh, no history of rollouts, no way to roll back a failed operation. And to address this issue, we created Cluster API Operator. Uh, this operator is designed to empower cluster administrators to handle the life cycle of uh, copy pro uh, providers uh, with declarative approach. It aims to improve user experience in installing and managing cluster, operate, uh, cluster API providers, uh, help, uh, making it simpler to handle day-to-day -day tasks and automate workflows with GitOps. <coughs> yeah, and on another note, we have a quick start guide, our book, mm -hmm. uh, which feel free to include, ask questions, open PRs to extend with functionality you think is needed because it's the very beginning of that. Uh, we are always open to contributions to the project. So mm -hmm. let's talk about operator features. Yeah, let's go to the features. Um, yeah, so let's just, uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, the operator features. And first, since this is an operator, obviously it leverages Kubernetes custom resource definitions, which defines declarative interface that reflects the desired state of your uh, cluster API providers on your clusters. And after that, teams can easily uh, define their configurations in code, which integrates well with uh, GitOps practices. After that, all configuration changes can be version controlled, be reviewed, and automatically applied through CICD pipelines. And this allows consistent and reproducible deployments across multiple environments. Uh, then, upgrades. And upgrades of cluster API providers can be hard uh, because users have to synchronize versions between components, ensure version compatibility, and our operator automates this process by detecting version changes in the uh, provider specifications and performing all necessary steps uh, while adhering to the compatibility matrix. And this simplifies um, uh, this uh, uh, upgrades process for engineering teams and uh, works well with continuous deployment practices. Then uh, the introduction of configuration API provides users with a rich set of options to customize their uh, providers. Through this API, users can do a lot of things, uh, adjusting feature gates, uh, replacing images, um, I don't know, uh, altering security settings, and more. And this level of customizations means that uh, your providers can be precisely tailored to uh, the specific needs of a team or to comply with an organization's policies. Yeah, previously, if you're talking about cluster CTL tool, you deploy your infrastructure in the desired manner as you did. It probably happens from a laptop. You have your own laptop, first time you just start a cluster CTL, you go through a quick start guide, you deploy a cluster. You modify the things and it's left as it is. Then you switch your laptops. You lose your credentials, you may lose your templates, or something else happens. Someone else wants to reproduce this. It's not possible. Uh, operator allows you to do so because, well, we have everything declaratively, and during the demo, we're going to actually deploy a cluster with all those things included. See the air gap setup, which, allow, which is not possible with cluster still, and it's pretty easy to do with uh, operator thanks to clever config map uh, model we have in place for this. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna go through GitHub scenarios, uh, upgrading your providers, which is much easier to do with those manifests in place, and the process is quite safe to be working there. And uh, upgrading cluster, which is also possible, but I'm gonna, gonna do this in the demo because it's a simple Docker cluster in this setup. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah, and uh, I mentioned that I work in New Relic and we use this operator in our infrastructure, so I just want to quickly mention w how we use it and for what. Um, our infrastructure is relatively big, so we have more than 200 production Kubernetes clusters, about 300 in general, as I remember, about 3,000 uh, 30, 30, nodes, and we use three uh, cloud providers at this moment, AWS, Azure, and GCP. For a a AWS, we use EKS, so we, we don't manage uh, control planes there. But for Azure and GCP, uh, we manage uh, the, those control planes ourselves with kubeADM uh, cluster API providers. And finally, uh, all clusters are independent, so they exist in different accounts. That's why you, uh, teams can interact with other clusters. Um, and because of that, we have to deploy cluster API everywhere on each cluster. And managing it with cluster CTL, yeah, it's a huge burden for us. And that's why we adopted uh, GitOps to manage all these installations with the cluster API operator. So to the next slide, in Rancher we also employ in using the copy operator for several reasons. First one is the native copy model, basically deploying a uh, copy infrastructure without any modifications and following up with upstream practices. Second thing, uh, we also uh, using our own bootstrap provider uh, based on R Rancher Kubernetes Engine 2, uh, allowing you to uh, basically provision your clusters with that. And it also uses copy and operator uh, as a means to deploy. 
it's very simple to do uh, with the things we provide in operator. Uh, the only difference we have in terms of uh, the operator deployment model, you will see this during the demo, we embed a single API type resource copy provider for all mentioned providers like core infrastructure, uh, add-ons, and other things. Uh, because we need to basically integrate those things with the Grancher credentials mechanisms and make integration with Grancher simpler thanks to this. And we also use Fit as our GitOps uh, management solution. Uh, I'm going to show this during the demo how it works with our operator. So let's probably, yeah, give you some frequently asked questions. So is copy operator replacing for class STL? Well, yes and no. Uh, in some scenarios, if you want to try out cluster API, it may be enough for you to use cluster, uh, to use cluster CTL. Uh, but you want, if you want to do those things at scale with multiple clusters, like Michael's mm -hmm. scenario, mm -hmm. uh, operator is much better for this, and it allows you better management model overall. We are using cluster CTL lives as to the second question. So everything you see in operator uh, is also based on the upstream implementation of those things. And this means that uh, all the solutions, all the previous work and all the problems they faced and solved in cluster CTL are also solved in operator. So it's safe to use both. Also, this means that sometimes if we have some issue, we have to implement the fix first in cluster CTL and then use in operator, which basically helps both worlds. Um, difference between operator and class CTL series. They are basically two different types. If you install a provider or a cluster with cluster CTL operator, uh, well, cluster CTL with copy operator, uh, cluster CTL won't know that it already has all the required infrastructure um, deployments in place and will say that I want to install it first for the first time. But internally, it's more or less the same. They also have a same specification, same fields, but they don't allow modifications for the uh, provisioned infrastructure, like deployments. You can specify feature gates. You can specify things in a declarative manner. Um, and there are some minor, minor ones, but it's, it boils down to the use case. And yeah, we can upgrade providers. We can upgrade providers very easily. Although we cannot currently manage cluster upgrades with what I have in copy operator. Although currently, as we are going through development, we are trying to make a cluster CTL uh, plugin for operator, which will allow you to do such operations. Um, so that's most of it. Let's go to the demo. Uh, here's the link. Um, I'm going to show it during the process. Uh, and you'll see uh, how we can prepare a basic set of copy operator providers, provisioning a cluster after set setting them up, upgrading the providers, and uh, using add-on providers as a new cluster uh, IP uh, provider types. Uh, I'm going to give Mike to Mike, <laughs> yeah, uh, to help me out here. So let me quickly switch the window. So. Uh, setup here is pretty simple. First, we're going to deploy our own cluster where we're going to deploy a fleet and um, cluster API operator. Um, so, fleet is going to manage our uh, uh, GitOps here. Uh, for the Git alternative, we're going to use Git Air, very simple thing. Uh, I'm going to copy those things and run them in the ground um, so far. So, yeah, nothing fancy here. Um, one thing to note, uh, as per installation of fleets, we have two charts, uh, fleet and uh, fleet CRDs. Uh, they both separated. That's all you need to install fleet initially. Uh, you always can deploy a fleet YAML with your installation to specify namespaces or cluster groups you want to manage with fleet, but we're going to go through the most basic scenario there is. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we're going to create a user. And what we're going to do is replicate a typical GitOps process you might see in your company, but in a very short manner uh, in a demo scenario because we don't have enough time for this. Uh, I'm just going to commit to the repo directly uh, without any pull request, without any CI. 
But you might expect that in your environment there's going to be a reproducible CI which will test for potential regressions before merging those things and applying the infrastructure uh, with whatever GitHub solution you want to use. And the last step, we're going to deploy the copy operator. Uh, it's a simple command. You can find it in quick start guide. With that, we're going to deploy set manager as a prerequisite. You can se deploy it separately or you can choose your own solution. Um, you just need to disable this in this scenario, don't specify. Um, yeah, let's wait for this to roll out. In the meantime, I'm going to start my KNNS. As you can see, the copy operator is getting rolled out. And let's go to the manifests we're going to deploy. First thing is finally, what is providers? Here we have a basic set of manifests for rolling out our copy infrastructure of version 1.6.2. Uh, as you can see, some things already are visible. We can deploy core provider, slash provider. All of those things are separate resources. You can manage them separately. Um, for each one, we specify some overrides for the manager deployment, where we'll set feature gates required by the Docker to deploy their quick start guide. Um, and also, we are specifying config secret with some variables. Docker specifically doesn't require any sort of um, well, uh, cloud credentials or of any kind, but we have the GitHub token so we can pull th things swift swiftly during the demo. Uh, it won't have any issue. Um, this secret is very useful because imagine that's your local environment, but now it lives in the cluster. That's allowed uh, for cluster admin to access those things only. So whatever or whoever else can be a cluster admin, and these people can reproducibly redeploy your infrastructure at any point in time. So, yeah, things are ready. Let's quickly check how our Git there looks like. So, Git there, we can sign in. As you can see, we have a repository created for us. That's where our uh, Git repo is established, and that's where uh, the fleet is gonna, is gonna watch for our changes. We're gonna open this Git repo. You can see the definition of this. So yeah, it's ready to be pushing. Um, so. First step, so let's gonna let's deploy our providers. And push. Uh, well, it doesn't know where, git init. Uh, So I think I think it's a different one. It's this one, I guess. Yeah. So now it should be good to go. And if we push and set the region, some things will start to happen. Seems to me that we still have outdated. Okay. Yeah, so respect master doesn't match any. Um, I suppose we might move to our recording of the demo in this scenario, if that doesn't work out. So 
So yeah, let's move to our recording uh, in this scenario. I think I have it somewhere. Unfortunately, some issues with our Git deployment didn't work out, but it doesn't matter that much. Yep. So I hope that's going to be enough. Uh, I'm going to deploy the same uh, essentially infrastructure as you saw in this demo. Well, unfortunately, it's not a real one, but uh, yeah, uh, Git repo should be established in a second. I'm going to move slightly further because we already passed this point. Yeah, and we are starting with uh, in the, like looking into those uh, projects we're going to deploy. Um, first one is, I guess, the providers, set of providers we're going to provision here. Um, those are the ones. The only difference here, as you can see, is a lack of uh, specified secret. It's not required. Um, it's only required in this scenario for Git token. But the rest of the things are the same. Uh, so the next one we're going to deploy is uh, a cluster. I'm going to shortly show the cluster here. It's a Docker cluster. We're going to get one with a quick start guide from Cluster API. Um, yeah, version 127.3, so we're node one pretty much, but otherwise nothing complicated, no cluster classes, nothing here. Um, and we're gonna deploy some add-ons. Uh, one of the features which our operator allows you to do is to override or specify a custom URL to fetch manifests from, so you can develop your own solutions for scenarios you need. Like those add-on providers is something that user is expected to uh, develop uh, themselves if they need or add. And we can specify a fetch config and URL to provide some sort of uh, location we can pull the manifest and deploy our infrastructure for this specific add-on provider as well. That's what we're going to do. Also, we're going to install Calico in our cluster as a CNI solution uh, with a Helm chart proxy. And also, those instances are just their installation. It's in the second add-on provider, a custom one. Uh, which just deploys a Valero instance in your other cluster and child cluster your provision and establishes some schedule for backups. So, yeah. So we are committing our first uh, set of providers. And as you can see in a second, those things should be provisioned. Um, we have a look at the Git repo. Git repo just basically says that something was reconciled, some commit ha uh, have changed. We can see some new CRDs installed. Uh, operator related are uh, here, so add-on, bootstrap, core provider. They're already installed. And as you can see, we already provisioned the first core provider for us. And this core provider is, is currently being reconciled, getting ready. This means that it already deployed your infrastructure for, for the core copy. Uh, that's the definition of that uh, infrastructure provider, which is a Docker one. We'll get ready in a second as well. And once it's, re once it's, it's ready, we are all set up to provision our cluster, um, which is going to be this quick start. So you can see uh, under the hood what's happening in the cluster. We are deploying those uh, components in the real time. Now we're committing the cluster. So when it comes to a cluster, just commit and push, and the fleet will pick up your changes. Everything will be rolled out in a declarative manner as well. So next step is prob probably going to be uh, how are we gonna upgrade our providers? 
As you can see, the cluster has been provisioned. Everything is ready for this. There are no issues with provisioning as well. It will become green. But imagine now we want to change our version of uh, providers. Now we have one seven beta one for copy, and here I'm gonna just upgrade to 163 from 162. Just a patch upgrade, nothing major, but still it's an upgrade of all the underlying infrastructure for the copy. And it's quite complicated scenario in the in the cluster still uh, case. For us, it's just changing the version of the manifests and applying with them via, via GitOps or just KipCTL basically in this scenario. It works very similarly. So we're gonna commit those changes and you'll see that manifest will be provisioned. Uh, during that time, we'll see how uh, the operator manages the underlying infrastructure and how you can supply your own manifest for air gap installations because operator under the hood creates a set of config maps with downloaded uh, manifests for, uh, for it to apply in the cluster. And if those manifests are already present in the cluster or you specify the selector in the spec of our provider for the manifest to be picked up, picked up from, it won't query any Go proxy or Git uh, uh, to pull them up. So the only thing you probably will require as a uh, additional thing for uh, rolling out in your ergot environment is uh, private OCI registry. Yeah, here you can see the config map with all the manifests, where is, this is for infrastructure Docker, uh, namespace, custom sub definitions. It was pulled, those things looks li look like so. You have core, 162, 163, so essentially that was after upgrade. Um, and if we reapply those things at some point, which you always can do, if you change manually something, you can always reapply those manifests and uh, nothing will be lost. Um, then, yeah, it's all ready to be used without internet connection. So next step is gonna be, we're gonna deploy some add-on providers as a Helm uh, and a Calico with that, yeah. And a Velero as a custom provider uh, for backup and restore solution. As you can see, again, there's just regular CRDs. You can check their state at, at any po point in time. They're getting installed. Helm is getting ready right now. Velero is gonna be ready pretty soon. And we can apply our next thing, chart proxy. And I'm gonna, as I have pretty much uh, small amount of time, skip to the end where we connect to the cluster itself and check that everything we deployed previously is actually made some changes to the child cluster, which it did, as you'll see. Hopefully. Yeah, some, some additional provisioning for the Valero to work, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, the cluster is running. So if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. Uh, that's all for the demo. Uh, yeah, that's all I have. And if you have anything to add, Michal. Uh, yeah, you can see, by the way, the state of the cluster at the end of the day. So Calico was being rolled out and some Valero instances are, uh, as well. So everything in GitOps manner. Yeah. So thank you for coming here today. Let's stay in touch. Our rep operator repository is under Kubernetes 6 organization. We have a dedicated channel in Slack and Kubernetes Slack and our documentation is available as a book. So you can read and update. Thank you for coming here today.